Hi everybody, thank you for joining us. I'm Larry Little, Public Information Officer here at the County's Emergency Operations Center. And this morning, I'm joined by Omar Torres, community leader and former school board member. And in just a moment, we will discuss the impact of COVID-19 on schools, communities, students, educators, and families. But first, I wanna let you know that safety is a priority for us here at the Emergency Operations Center. And we have removed our facial coverings so everyone, including our American Sign Language uh, interpreters, can clearly understand and communicate the information that we will be sharing this morning. So I wanna just jump right into it. I remember growing up in Arkansas and we would have, uh, it would snow from time to time and we would miss probably one week and the parents would just go crazy. They didn't know what to do, the schools didn't know what to do. So I can't imagine what it's like having COVID come and wreak havoc on schools uh, right now. And so what has been the reaction of, of parents uh, in your district? Right. Well, not only in, not only in my district, mm -hmm. but throughout, throughout the county and uh, throughout the nation as well. Uh, they are worried and concerned that the, the issues that we've had in the educational system has been uh, exacerbated uh, by COVID-19. They have always been there. However, you know, public, public private partnerships have been trying to get up to speed uh, to deal with these uh, injustices in our ed educational system. Mm -hmm. However, COVID-19 has exacerbated that, but I'm, I'm really uh, excited and I'm really excited and happy that uh, our uh, public-private partnerships like the City of San Jose and the, and the County of Santa Clara and numerous school districts are making sure that our kids are going to be connected to, to online learning. So. so what are some of the effects uh, that COVID is having on communities and schools uh, that in, in your particular area? You're in the uh, East uh, San Jose area, correct? Yes. So when we're talking about East San Jose, we're talking about overcrowded conditions. We're talking about our families moving place to place, being displaced, gentrification. And unfortunately, we're also talking about a terrible digital divide. And our East San Jose, downtown, and throughout Santa Clara County, because there's pockets of, of poor neighborhoods in Santa Clara County. However, in some, some zip codes, we know that that the problem and the situation is even worse. And so our kids haven't been able to, to connect digitally because they don't have the necessary tools and the resources to do it. Yeah, that was one of the issues uh, with uh, distant, uh, distant learning. Uh, talk about some of the issues uh, where in some communities, distant learning, learning worked fine, but in, in areas where disproportionately affected where their income levels, uh, fall into a certain range, you know, they didn't have internet access. Just share information about that. Yeah, well, it's unfortunate that with school districts now doing online learning, most of our kids who cannot log on, unfortunately did not attend school. Also, parents were concerned that when they were connected, that it was only an hour or two hour uh, instruction. And we know that children are better served when they're in school for five plus hours because they're learning and their brain is, is stimulating. However, once that two hour is, is done, uh, you know, they don't have any follow-ups, they don't have extracurricular activities that, that, they, could, that they, they could do. And unfortunately, that's, that is the, a, a massive situation in, in East San Jose and downtown San Jose where our kids, even though they're connected, are only learning an hour a day. Mm -hmm. So what has been your message to uh, parents and community members? My, my message has been uh, that we have to uh, connect them to resources that are, that are important. I think one important message, and, and this is an important message, is that the city of San Jose um, is going to be investing 20, $24 million to build infrastructure for online learning throughout our city of San Jose, and that the county has invested uh, seven point one million dollars for devices, but also we have incredible school districts like Eastside Union, who have who are who are making sure that children in, in the East Side also are being connected online. So when we talk about the importance of public-private partnerships in the educational system, it's very important to do that. 
because we just need to speed it up for the kids to be online. Mm -hmm. So what will be your message to students? Because you know some students uh, were not performing well when they were in uh, taking in-person classes. What would be your message to students who are struggling to reach their uh, academic goals right, right now? Right. Uh, for me, it's, 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 it's very, I've been losing sleep because education is, is a priority for myself and for my community. Uh, I didn't go to the best schools. I didn't have enough of the resources for me to be successful in elementary and middle and high school. I had wonderful parents and I did have wonderful teachers. However, those resources were lacking for myself. Mm -hmm. And so when I see kids now, uh, you know, I think it's, it's, it's unfortunate what we're going through. But I, as I always told students, wherever I went, wherever I presented, wherever I served, I said, do not give up. Uh, right now, we're, we're in, in, in trying times, but do not give up on your, on your education. Make sure that you're learning. I think this is a great, ex uh, a, a great time to uh, pick up a book and start drawing or doing crossword puzzles, uh, reading. I struggled reading my whole life, but I continue to force myself to, to read. But not only read, my passion is, is, is politics and learning about community, but also learning about, now that COVID-19 is happening, mm -hmm. I read about uh, scientific research mm -hmm. about what's happening <clears throat> with COVID-19 or you know animals and so it's it's you you just have to break out of your the box that you're in to learn. Mm -hmm. So what are you hearing from teachers and administrators? While they are they are concerned because they do want to go back to 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 the classroom and they hope that they will however I know many friends who are teachers and they're, they are excited that they don't have to go into the classroom because right now is not the time to go to the classroom. Mm -hmm. Our cases are surging. You just mentioned that we had over a thousand uh, this week. That's scary. And so, and now we're seeing, maybe because COVID-19 is, is evolving, now we're seeing a lot more kids who are, uh, who are being diagnosed with, with COVID-19 and, and that, that's scary. Mm -hmm. uh, that to me is scary and so right now is not the time to be in classrooms or in packed, uh, in packed rooms. As you know, also in the east side we, have, we don't have the infrastructure in some schools to separate by six feet or rotate and so, so right now is the time to, to not be in the classroom but we also have to make sure that, that children are learning. So it's this, the safety of the teachers and the, and the learning for the kids. Mm -hmm. So we got a message, um, I believe it was uh, this week or last week, they're all running together now, um, where a teacher was concerned about having to wear a uh, facial covering all day. What are your thoughts on students and teachers wearing face coverings? Well, I don't want to be rude, but doctors and nurses wear face coverings all day long. Uh, it, 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 it is... It is something that I do also get tired of, but I know that my decision is, is very important because if I don't wear a mask, I might get COVID-19 and take it to my family or take it to work, mm -hmm. and it, it might kill somebody. And so it's important that we wear masks. Two hours, 15 minutes, whatever it may be, wear your mask, that's the important part. That's gonna stop the, the COVID-19 from, from spreading. Mm -hmm. so. <clears throat> so someone uh, put a comment here saying private schools are opening, public schools are not. Can you just kind of speak to that? Because I, 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 I don't think they understand the difference. Yeah, so, so public schools are governed by school boards. Private schools are governed by board of directors. And so it's unfortunate that some school boards cannot hold private schools accountable. Uh, and to me, that, uh, that's very scary. I, I didn't know that private schools, uh, some of them were going to in-class learning. Unfortunately, that's their right because they have a, a board of directors that's probably pushing the admin and the teachers to come back. Uh, so it's unfortunate that uh, private schools are, are returning to the classroom. That is, that is yeah. very, that's not good. Yeah, and sometimes private schools, they have a little bit more money than public schools. They definitely do, <laughs> and that's why we're in this situation, yes. All right. So uh, what are your hopes for the uh, schools reopening in, in the 2021 school year? Right. I think that 
school districts need to be prepared to hit the ground running. A lot of our kids are going to be uh, behind and they need to create a concrete plan to make sure that our children are, are succeeding academically. COVID-19 has, has just destroyed, all, well, destroyed, uh, has made the situation worse already. And so we need to be prepared so when children come back to school that our school districts have the resources, uh, that they have a plan, and that our children are safe. Yeah, so uh, the uncertainty of COVID-19 has caused many families to adjust the way they live from distant learning to childcare. I talked to a few parents uh, just yesterday and I wanted to share the story with you. Okay, so my eldest is 17 and he's gonna be a senior this year. And my youngest is 12, he'll be 13 this year and he's going into seventh grade. And he's seven going into the second grade. Well, I, I hope at least he has some very cool masks to wear. He does, he's got some new cool masks. We even ordered face shields, so he's got all the gear. But what has it been like for your children? Uh, initially, it was weird, you know, for everyone. We all had to adjust to it. So they had assignments, they uh, were able to uh, connect with their teachers. Uh, they do miss their friends, but then they did say to me that they were connecting with them online. And this is someone who is not getting the same level of social stimulation is not getting, or physical activity. This is someone who is like craving that, that interaction with other folks, someone who has a lot of energy. And so oh, no. when you have a child with that, you know, needs to move, needs to have fun and play with other kids, like, and they're not getting that, they're, they're gonna act up. So that's what the, that's, that's what it's been like at home. I think he's lonely. You know, I think he's wanting to get out a lot. We've been pretty upfront with him from the very beginning about what's happening and just validating that this is a really hard experience for him. It's a really hard experience for his friends. It's really hard for all of us. And he's been, you know, pretty resilient. I think like he enjoys the extra time with his parents. So what has it been like for you and your husband, uh, you know, with him not going to school and you going to work? Well, I learned to sleep with earplugs <laughs> because they're uh, sometimes they're on a lot uh, later at night, you know, and they're really active at night and I need to go to sleep and I like it quiet. So I've learned to sleep with earplugs um, for my husband. Life didn't really change for him because he's a first responder already. So, you know, he has his normal schedule. The only thing for him is, you know, he was coming home late sometimes, but School work wise, our kids were really good with getting all the work done. And then now we're into summer and, but again, it's, it's a lot of adjustment for us because we had to um, modify the way, you know, we were doing things because we're so used to always going out. And now we're in the beginning, it was like, we're stuck at home and all we see is each other. So for my husband and I going to work, um, it was a little bit nice, you know, because we're still interacting somewhat, even social distancing, we're, we're interacting with people. From we worried about the kids, though, but the kids kept telling us that they were okay. Uh, for for my partner and I, we we've, we've tried to split the load, you know, in terms of parenting and teaching. But she also has an incredibly demanding schedule, and so a lot of a lot of this has required independence on the part of our child. We've created schedules, the three of us together. Um, and again, trying to split up our time. Um, uh, one tool that's been sort of successful for us is this tactic that's part of this parenting method called Love and Logic, where we uh, put kind of the responsibility on him to complete his assignments at his, you know, at his own pace. And so that can look like, say he has math, we tell him you can have your lunch when your math work is done. And then that kind of eases any need for fighting or rebelling. So that's been somewhat successful, but you know, every day has been, every day has been hard because we still have our work to do. He still needs the same, he still needs attention. Oh, what are your thoughts about school reopening? I know you've had some conversations, have been a part of meetings about reopening. 
So um, we're actually, I'm actually quite excited for schools to have a plan. Um, I know that there's some fine tuning that the, each school district has to have, um, but I'm excited to, to read it, to see it, to see what they want to do. But I know that I have to do my part. And my part is teaching the kids on what to do to prepare for reopening. And um, because just like how it needs to be safe for us when we leave the house, it does need to be safe for them to leave the house as well. So I think that, um, you know, I can't rely on the school, to be honest, to, to keep everything safe for them. Everyone has their own individual responsibility to be safe. And I know that it can be difficult for some of the younger kids and, and it can be difficult for actually any kid, but I'm trying to do my part to have the kids recognize what they need to do, you know, and I want them to, regardless if they go out to school or they leave the house, you know, to do some other activity or just even walk around the house, you know, in the neighborhood, I want them to practice social distancing. I want to remind them to wear their face covering. When they go into school, I want, I'm going to give them a, a short supply of like, uh, sanitizer wipes so that they can wipe down their desks and you know and anything that they think that may have been touched by somebody else it's it's okay for them to to go ahead and wipe things down and you know um, do things like that so I, I, I just want to help them with that especially wearing face coverings throughout the day my older son has already said to me that he wants to go back he wants to have some in-person instruction with his teacher and interactions with his classmates my younger son, he can go either way, but he's kind of leaning more now towards returning to school. Well, our school district has notified us that they won't be, they will be operating remotely until October 4th um, and, and, and until cases are sta stable. So, you know, while this has been an incredibly stressful time, we, we support the district's decision. I think this is it's important to realize that this is not forever. This is a means to an end. And so as much as we can, we'll, we'll try to support his learning. You know, it's, it's not the norm, but we have to make the best of what we got right now in mm -hmm. order for all of us to be safe. And we continue to encourage people to be safe uh, practice social distancing, mask up, and stay at home if you don't need to go out. If we we'll take a look at the data dashboard here, and you can see, Omar, we are surging. Uh, cumulative uh, cases right now, 8,046. Uh, new cases as of yesterday, 254. Uh, mm -hmm. We've had 178 deaths, no new deaths, uh, thankfully. And look at the hospitalizations. Uh, I remember a few weeks ago, it was down in the 50s. Uh, now it's up to uh, 167. So. We are seeing uh, a surge in the numbers here. And I think one thing that people uh, should think about is, you know, a lot of people want uh, different businesses to be open, but if the numbers keep going up, you know, those businesses may not be able to stay open and it may uh, delay uh, school starting uh, as well. And yes. it, it also puts our youth at risk. What would be your advice to everyone uh, when it comes to following the guidelines and protocol to slow the spread of COVID-19 right. in the county. Right. Larry, actually, I wanted to go back to the question that was asked on Facebook. I was able to obtain some information. So not all private schools are going back to their classroom. There's gonna be a hybrid of online learning and staggered attendance. Mm -hmm. And so I would check in for that per individual who asked that question, I would check in with with your students private school okay. so okay. and and I'm not sure I'm gonna have the opportunity to say it at the end but I also want to thank uh, teachers who are being incredibly flexible with our children and their families during these difficult times so thank you very much teachers but also thank you very much parents for keeping your children safe and also being a teacher during these trying times mm -hmm. so what would you say for people who say, oh, I don't need a mask to go somewhere, or yeah. I don't need to be six feet apart. It's not going to happen to me. Yeah, I have to, I have to remain P PG on this one. <laughs> but it shouldn't be politicized. Mm -hmm. Wear your masks. Mm -hmm. That's the important part. You saw the numbers. The only people that are going to be suffering is our children, because they're not going to be able to go back to school. Also, 
uh, our universities, as you, as you know, are going to be online. And it's, we just need our folks to have a great education and be ready to hit, to hit the ground running uh, when our economy improves. Mm -hmm. Omar, thank you for being here. You. Uh, if you would like more information uh, regarding guidance uh, for cor coronavirus in schools, you can visit sccgov.org. Uh, forward slash coronavirus, select the learn what to do drop down and select coronavirus in schools. There you will find a 22 page document on reopening of Santa Clara County K through 12 schools for the 2021 school year. All right, well, that's going to do it for today. Thanks for joining us. Uh, remember to join uh, our Facebook Live in Spanish uh, beginning at 11 o'clock and on Thursdays. We have a Facebook Live in Vietnamese. Have a safe day, everyone. Take care of yourselves, mostly. Take care of your neighbors, and we will see you next time.